We're so glad you could be here for this totally jam-packed episode of The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. The Sopranos is having a moment, a resurgence, thanks to the success of a new prequel film, The Many Saints of Newark. It features performances from some of our favorite Broadway stars, including Tony Award winner Leslie Odom Jr. and Tony nominee Billy Magnuson. But it's one of the stars of the original TV series that's making headlines for her latest turn on the New York City stage. Here's why. The new play Morning Sun features a stacked cast, including Edie Falco, Blair Brown, and Marin Ireland. Paul Wintour caught up with the stars. That's right, Tamsin. In Morning Sun, Edie Falco, Blair Brown, and Marin Ireland play three generations of women navigating life from the same New York City walk-up apartment. I sat down with these three talented performers to find out more. I love this new play you're in. Uh, and, and sounds like it was actually written for you. Is this, is this true? Tell me about this. This is true, which is um, the first for me. And I, I still have a hard time saying those words because it's kind of a big deal and it's actually very, very moving. Sure. I mean, we met a, a good number of times, Simon Stevens and I, as he was writing the play. And so it's actually based on the life of his sister. Some of the details were also taken from my life and mm -hmm. you know, it's something that he thought I could play easily. But he's British. He's British. This is a very New York play. It's a very New York play, and he's a man, and it's about women. You know when you hear someone speak English when it's not their first language? There's something often beautiful about the way you can hear something, because oh. they use words that you, like, you're kind of like, oh my gosh, I would never think to say it that way, and you can hear it a totally different way. That's the way it feels, having a man, a British man, write this play about women in New York City. He just sees it from a different lens, so, um, hoping that um, people will be able to feel the newness of that. As a longtime New Yorker, this play feels extremely authentically New York to me, I've written by this British man <laughs> uh, with these amazing female characters. Do you have that same reaction? I absolutely do. And um, you know, there's something, we, we, Simon has said it himself, he's like, I shouldn't be allowed to do this on a number of levels. I shouldn't be allowed to write a play about all women. I shouldn't right. be allowed to write a play about New York. And yet, he is a particular special talent. And what feels to me even more possible with someone who is a, a kind of a witness to something is the capacity to observe very specific details and experiences that maybe someone inside the experience wouldn't. And so what's interesting is that the three of us, me and Blair and Edie, are often being like, this sounds like a British guy, or like, this isn't what New Yorkers would say, or that sort of thing just to help him along. And yet, I wouldn't, I don't consider Simon like at this point a, a visitor for the last 15 years that I've known him. Every time he comes to the city, we see each other. And that's a long time. And sure. he's been here for long stretches doing plays for years and years and years. So he, he kind of brings that outsider's love for it, but also he's witnessed the city changing himself. It also reminds me of Humans of New York because yes. it, it's really sort of yeah. honoring these regular women that you, you know, you see them it's at Dwayne Reed. You, it's you, true. We, we are looking at that person you see over there and the fact that you actually completely, generally underestimate who that person is and that everybody's life is worth having a real look at. There's a lot that's very funny, there's lots of absurd, there's lots of very tragic, lots of very boring bits, there's fascinating stuff, there's eccentricities, there's contradictory bits. And I love that he just goes headlong, headlong into that about people. The thing that I love about it is the romance of place that Simon captures in this play, because it's like, he's from England, how does he know that? But that was it, now when I came here, if I could live in a village, I live in Chelsea, I've lived there for a thousand years, and the reason, because we couldn't afford the West Village. So I sort of get the romance of the West Village, but I love that whole notion of, uh, this play kind of being a love letter to New York, but but from a, a whole point of view, not just how lovely it all is. So tell me about the hand on the map. What's this story? You know, um, Simon at some point asked me to put my hand on a map and he traced it and I didn't know what the heck he was doing, but at this point I'm like, I'm just gonna go with this. <laughs> and he followed, it was on a map of uh, the West Village area, the downtown uh -huh. area of New York, and he just followed the path that my fingers made and stopped at places and walked through places. And I don't know if this is something he's done before, but um, a lot of the, that stuff that he found along that way has, has uh, made it into the play. When you actually read it, what was the reaction to all that? 
Well, you know, I came to New York a long time ago. Like even the places that I am sort of, rom that I have romantic feelings about, yeah. like Rome, Italy. There are people who've lived in Rome forever that are probably like, ah, it's not that great. You know, it, the play, that place closed and the whatever, my heat doesn't work in my apartment. So I have a little of that. Like um, I've lived in New York for a very long time. So I'm, uh, on some level, I'm, this is gonna sound true, I'm kind of over it. I'm, I mean, the excitement about the West Village is right. gone. For me, it's home, and it's been home for many, many years. So to hear the language of the excitement of somebody who still has that romance about it is very sweet. It's a pretty magnificent area in which I live, you know. I'll occasionally go down one of the side streets and with all the brownstones and the trees and the little, you know, the cobblestones and think, no, I, I, I remember, you know, I remember that feeling. The title of the play is Edward Hopper, a fam very famous painting of his wife, sort of looking out onto the morning sun. Right. How do you think that, that painting kind of informs the play? I love that the painting can be anything to anyone. You know, another person would say, oh, it's a new day, she's looking out into this great city where she lives, you know what I mean? And then someone yeah. else could look at it and have an entirely other experience sure. of it. And I, I somehow think that that might even be the experience of someone watching this play. There are a million ways to come at all of it. The play is pretty porous in that way, um, much like the painting is. It can be interpreted any number of ways depending on the individual doing the interpretation.